Thank you for that introduction, Rosha. That prepares me on a good foundation. We live our lives the way we respond to it. How do we respond? Or how do we live our lives? And I was just reflecting. Our actions, good, bad, causing harm, bringing joys to others. Where is our actions stemming from? Are they stemming from responding to our thoughts? Are we not responding to our thoughts and doing what we is the core of making the better choice? Because our minds can be telling us one thing, going in another direction. And that's where the Buddha said, you know, there's suffering, there's dukkha in the world. Is it, it's because of choice. Wow, if everybody chose to do good and to bring out the best of others, and with that is being present to the moment. Bring present to the moment and seeing things for what they are. Letting things go. And on my Facebook feed the other day, something I wrote two years ago about relationships um, really struck me, and so I wanted to share that today. And it's a short little paragraph. I, sometimes when I write things, I put them out there, and I look back at them again, and I'm like, who is that? <laughs> Where was I? Was I in that place? You know, am I still at that place? How I used to feel? Or And um, I want to quote uh, Christopher, uh, Christmas Humphrey from the study in the Middle Way. And, um, and I like what he says here. By one self, evil is done. By one self, one suffers. By one self, evil is left undone. By oneself, one is purified. The task is made far easier by choosing in an environment of good thoughts, good books, and good people than by deliberately increasing one, one's decreasing uh, difficulties by choosing like the reverse, like saying, um, where is it that we are placing ourselves? And what is familiar to us? And hearing Wong this morning talking about how she visited her family's ancestry where they lived in <coughs> Vietnam. And when she stepped off out of the car and stepped on the ground. She said she had this profound experience like this is home, this is familiar. Sometimes we can get lost in that. What feels good, what looks right. You know, this is just... And then just reflecting on that brought me to like reincarnation you know, our past lives, you know, maybe when she stepped off, you know, from that car, stepping into that ancestral land where she, her ancestors lived and still live. 
and she talked about being born Buddhist. And in life, you might change into other religions, go in, on a different path. She said, but you'll die still a Buddhist. The Buddha nature, the essence of the core of what is good, is within us all. And I always look at what's going on in the world. People really recognize who they truly are and not their perceptions of maybe what society has formed them to guide them in a direction to discriminate, to hate, to bring suffering to others. Because they don't even, we don't recognize ourselves. How can we recognize the good that's in the world? When we come here, or uh, we're celebrating the chants and stuff, we recognize that because it's already within us. That, that peace, that resonance, that light, I feel, is coming forth from that true essence, that Buddha nature. So, joys are not fulfilled from others. Discovering self is the greatest joy. Filling voids is a perception you are lacking something. In actuality, you have everything in this present moment. You just have what is present here. There's nothing more that you should be seeking, thinking out of this present moment. Because once you start reflecting on what it or I could have or it's a distraction from this moment in this time. And being present is there's like a oneness with all things, with this with each other. And the awareness of that, I think things will arise to show you how to lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. Because truly, when you take care of others, you're taking care of yourself. You know, possessions and controlling what you think how life should be is not freedom. There's no freedom in trying to control what you think. How things should be. be formed in your own little world, you know. Sometimes we have this perception of ourselves of, well, this is how my life is. This is how it's going to be. Not moment, moment did I ever think I was going to become a Buddhist monk or a Buddhist. That was far from it. Of what I, what I had per perceived my future was going to be. I just knew, was, you know, I had an interior uh, religious kind of calling that that was always there, but not a, a Buddhist monk. Even to, to the moment of becoming a monk, I didn't know a monk had all these different responsibilities and tasks of like being a priest. Oh, wow, well, you're going to be doing ceremonies for the deceased, births, you know, uh, marriages. And that's all a surprise. Sometimes we're surprised when you just be in that present moment to will guide you to uh, that fulfillment. Thank
that you enjoy and peace, but you recognize which is familiar. This is very familiar for me. So freedom and mindfulness are a state of gratitude for what you do have. Gratitude. Just being thankful. Wow, the, the sweat, blood, and tears, I'm sure, what Roshi has brought into this center, you know, 30-something years ago. This did not happen overnight. And just reflecting on that, wow. I'm sure he himself didn't. I'm sure he had a vision, but wow, look at what has unfolded for those who are seeking peace of mind in their lives. Very thankful that we have a place such like this, tucked away here in the desert on this hot 100 degree day. <laughs> 106 <laughs> today. Oh, 106 it's going to be? Yeah. So here in the high desert, here at 12 Tuna, uh, Desert Zen Center is where we're located. Uh, here in California, we're having such a heat wave. How do we respond to it? <laughs> Don't respond too fast, you'll get overheated. Just be still. <laughs> and so, uh, Yeah, freedom and mindfulness are a state of gratitude for what you do have. And happiness will naturally follow from within and not from without. It almost like it flows from within. Joy, peace, happiness, love. And mindfully, oh, the awareness of that There's a little enlightenment. Enlightenment is, wow, you're aware of what is present. It's like that little light bulb. That lets you know where you're at in, in that present moment. Is, that's where you're supposed to be. Because if you choose to follow a path that bring suffering and uh, uh, difficulties in one's life it tends to have like a shadow over your life and it's not a good place to be and especially mentally sometimes we live in our minds we have all these scenarios that is not reality and uh, this present moment isn't reality. <laughs> it's already fleeting, it's already gone. That moment is gone. <laughs> Never did that happen again. So truly this one life that we're living is a pursuit of self-discovery. Not like so much seeking, but like just being still, silent, and just, just being present. Trying to grasp what you want to control. I want, I do not have, this is how I want it to be leads to unhappiness and dissatisfaction, like I mentioned. Where is it that we are, what actions are we choosing to lead to happiness? And to be aware in that moment, am I causing others discomfort or dissatisfaction or unhappiness? Taking care of one another is something that Roshi always sends off, you know, people that come and visit, you know, always remember to take care.
care of one another. Really, take care of one another. So just being and seeing maybe that your partner, your friends, and your family is yourself. How do we perceive others? What is it that we are trying to so recognize in others that makes us unhappy or what brings us joy? Why are we choosing certain things and individuals that, um, oh, I like that about that person. They do that so well. Or I dislike what they do. Or I don't like how they do that. Perception can really lead to a disconnection from relationships, friendships, and family, which is a barrier to be present to one another in this present moment and the times that you have with each other. And so Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 